I want to help you turn your game from this to this. In this video, we'll be installing the Skyrim script extender, and I'll show you how to update and maintain it despite annoying Creation Club updates. To give you a little more insight as to what this mod does, I'll refer back to its name, Script Extender. Recall in the previous video, we discussed scripts as being assets that reside in the game's data folder. These scripts are snippets of code used by the game engine to perform specific tasks, and are little more than text documents with written commands. You can think of SKSE as a mod that extends this list of commands. The sheer power this resource provides for mod authors cannot be overstated as it allows them to get information and processes that aren't normally accessible through vanilla commands. To put simply, many amazing gameplay mods just would not be possible without the Skyrim script extender. Okay, let's download it. For some reason, downloading and installing the script extender is a very intimidating process for many users. My guess is that this is because they don't know what's going on behind the scenes of a mod manager. But, with the information I have provided in my guides, this process should be trivial, if you've been paying attention. To start, let's head over to the official Skyrim Special Edition website hosted on skse.silverlock.org. Links are below, as always. This mod cannot be found on Nexus. To those of you that have never seen a basic HTML website before, this may look very sketchy, but I assure you that everything here is 100% safe. At the very top of the page, there will be three games listed. The original version of Skyrim, the special edition version of Skyrim, and the VR edition of Skyrim. Obviously, we are here for the special edition, so let's download that. Unlike other mods, SKSC64 has files that must be installed in the game folder. Recall that this is where the Skyrim data folder and SkyrimSE.exe reside. Recall also that MO2 is only able to place files in the data folder itself, and not the directory above it. Therefore, we will need to open up the mod manually, and place those files in the game's directory by hand. When we download mods, they come packaged in something called an archive. These usually have the extensions .zip, .7z, or .rar, and are somewhat similar to BSA archives we talked about before. Like BSAs, they contain files and folders, but unlike BSAs, they cannot be utilized by the game engine. The purpose of these general archives is to package loose files into one file that can be sent across the web. There is more to it than that, but for the sake of my guides, that's all you need to know. Just about all mods come packaged like this, even the unofficial patch we downloaded in the last video. The only difference is that before, MO2 extracted the mod's files itself, but because this is a special case, we need a program that allows us to do this manually. For the sake of this tutorial, we'll be using a free one called 7-Zip. If you have a different preferred archive extractor, like WinRAR, feel free to use it. I just find that 7-Zip is no-nonsense and works great. Plus, it's free. Head on over to 7-Zip.org and download the 64-bit version. Run the .exe file from your browser or downloads folder. Pick your installation folder, this is a general tool, not just for modding, so I'm going to install it with my other programs. The default directory, or other one of your choosing, is also fine. Install. Now, we can find the SKSC64 archive we downloaded before. If we double click it, we can actually open it up and see what files are contained within. If you get a pop-up, prompting you to choose a program to open it with, select 7-zip file manager and make sure always use this app is checked. If it's not in the list, hit More Apps and scroll down to look for another app on this PC. Browse for the place you installed 7-zip to, and double-click 7zfm.exe. Hit OK. We can now see the files contained in the archive. If we open up the first folder, you can see that the mod contains some loose files, a SRC folder, and its own data folder. As you may have guessed, the files in the data folder need to go in the game's data folder, but, because we are using MO2 to manage the game data, we won't be moving the SKSE data manually. Now, in File Explorer, open up the Skyrim Special Edition game folder. 
Select everything except data in the 7-zip window and drag it into Skyrim Special Edition. This will copy the files over. At this point, we can close both windows. Now, let's install the contents of the data folder using Mod Organizer. Go ahead and find the SKSE64 archive we downloaded again, and drag it into the MO2 Downloads pane. Ignore the warning sign, that's just there because SKSE64 is not from Nexus and doesn't have any information from that site. Double click it to install. I like to rename the mod SKSE64 Data, but you can name it whatever you like, so long as you know that it's SKSE64 and that it's only the data portion. As you may have noticed, unlike the unofficial patch, the manual window has opened automatically. The reason for that is pretty evident by the glaring red text. No game data on top level. This is there because the SKSC64 archive is not packaged in a way that MO2 recognizes. The recognizable way is to have the data folder files in the archive directly. The best way to think of this is that MO2 uses the archive itself as the data folder. As you can see though, the SKSC archive contains a folder called SKSC64 underscore the version number, inside of which is the actual data folder. Improper archive packaging exists in many mods and is the main fork when it comes to MO2 installations, i.e. you won't just see this in the script extender. Luckily, in 99% of cases, this is quite easy to fix, but for this very reason I recommend always hitting the manual button so you can see the file structure when installing mods with MO2. It's usually in the bottom left corner of the install window, unless it's been opened automatically like in this case. Again. If you watched the previous video, you'll know what I'm talking about. To fix this, we simply need to find the data folder. In this case, it's nicely labeled for us as data, so it isn't too much trouble. Sometimes, however, it can be named something else, in which case you will have to figure out that it's the data folder through well-informed reasoning. As we discussed before, data folders can contain ESP files and BSA files. They also may contain loose folders for scripts, meshes, textures, or other assets. Here, we can see the scripts folder, so we know for certain that the one above is data. With this information in mind, we can now right-click it and set it as our data directory. MO2 does in fact confirm this in the bottom left corner, but that message isn't 100% reliable, so it's best to know for certain yourself. Now, we can safely hit OK and the mod will install properly. Don't forget to activate it in the left pane. The final thing you need to know about SKSC64 is how to correctly run it. Unlike other mods that work just fine with the vanilla Skyrim SE.exe executable, SKSC requires you to run the game from its own exe file. You may have noticed it when we manually place files into the game folder. If we were using a normal mod manager, we'd just be able to run that directly and everything would work. But remember, MO2 creates a virtual directory, so our game's data folder doesn't actually contain other mods or the SKSC64 data for that matter. To solve this, we need to run SKSC64's exe file from MO2. We need to do this every time we want to play Skyrim with SKSC or any mods that rely on it. Close MO2 and reopen it. At this point, SKSE should have appeared in your top right list of programs. Selecting it and hitting run will work perfectly. Also note that you can create shortcuts to run any program through MO2 by clicking this drop down menu. Selecting toolbar will add it to the top of MO2 so you don't have to search through the drop down list and desktop will create one to your desktop. I don't use start menu shortcuts but if you want one, the option is there for you. Now, let's run SKSE and see if we installed it properly. When you're in the main menu, you can quickly get into the game by opening up the console. That's done with the tilde key right below the escape button on the top left of your keyboard. I'll throw it up on screen so you can see what I'm talking about. Type COC space white run and hit enter. Now, go into the game menu and in the bottom left, you can see your version of Skyrim followed by your version of SKSE64. We now know that everything is working as it should. Before I wrap up the video, let's talk about maintenance for a second. Unfortunately, SKSE64 is not a hands-off mod, at least not on the special edition. On Old Rim, the final version of SKSE is out and the game no longer receives updates, so one install is all you will need. On special edition, this is not the case. As of making this video, and for the foreseeable future, 
Skyrim SE continues to be updated by Bethesda. Each time new Creation Club content is added. This causes problems for SKSE64 as the Skyrim SE.exe file keeps changing. Each time this happens, SKSE64 must update, and this usually takes a few days' time. Until the mod is updated, you will not be able to run SKSE or any mods that require it until the update files become available. Essentially, until that point, your game is unplayable on the newest version. Just keep checking the SKSE website for the newest version. You'll have to remember and compare the runtime version against your game version. You can check the game version by running SSE through Steam and looking at the start menu as before. When SKSC64 is updated, you can uninstall the old SKSC64 data in Mod Organizer's left pane by right-clicking it and selecting Remove Mod. After which, just follow the steps in this guide again, but overwrite the game folder files when prompted. This is the process for updating SKSC64, regardless of whether or not your version of Skyrim has changed. So, if you see a new version of SKSC64, that wasn't a result of a special edition update, just follow the same steps. So that seems like a pain, right? Not being able to play Skyrim until the script extender updates? Luckily, there is a way around it. Back up your Skyrim SE.exe file in your game's data folder in another directory, and move it back over after your game updates. Obviously, this does cause problems if you're one of the few people that does buy Creation Club content. You may see stability issues, apparently, but from my experience, this method works just fine, especially because it's temporary and you will still want to update Special Edition and the Script Extender as soon as the new version becomes available. To get SSE to update again, right-click it in Steam and select Properties. Head over to the Local Files tab and click Verify Integrity of Game Files. After it scans the files, it will notice that Skyrim SE.exe is outdated and update it. If you ever forget to back up the file, you can always manually re-download it using the Steam console. First off, let's get the file's Steam information from the internet. Head over to steamdb.info and search Skyrim Special Edition. Once you found it, in the list, remember its ID, 489830. Click it. Hit Depose and find Skyrim Special Edition EXE. Remember the second ID, 489833. This one and the last one are unlikely to change. Click it and go to Manifests. Here, you'll see the different versions of the file and when they were published. You'll most likely want the second most recent one, as you're reverting to the previous version. Remember its ID, and this one will be different each time. I'm going to remember the most recent one, as this is a demonstration. Next, hit Windows and R on your keyboard. The Windows key is to the right of Control, and has the Microsoft icon on it. This will open up the Windows Run dialog box. Inside of it, you'll want to type the following command. Steam, colon, forward slash, forward slash, nav, forward slash, console, and hit Enter. This will bring up the Steam console. Inside that, type download underscore depot, followed by the first ID, second ID, and third ID. These should all have spaces between them. Press enter. Once the file is downloaded, take some time to remember its directory. Head there, take it, and put it into the Skyrim Special Edition game folder. Alright, that was a long one. Remember this video when SSE inevitably updates. Leave a comment if you have any questions, I do my best to answer as quickly as possible. Remember to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. As always, left side is the next video if it's out, and right side is the overview of my guides, in case you jumped in midstream. Hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.